Hi there, Karen Flaherty from Living by Human Design. Hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to be talking about the gate 13, which is the listener. Okay, so the gate 13 uh, started uh, in the afternoon of February 2nd. It goes until February 7th, and the earth is in gate 7, which is called leadership. So it's a nice combination here right off the top of the G center. The 13 is on the right, the 7 is on the left, and uh, the 13 is all about listening, and the 7 is about leadership. We're taking... Uh, being offered leadership positions. And so it's the, the kind of person who may not seek leadership positions, but is offered the leadership position. So you can see the two of them are a nice combination together. This, the week starts with a uh, definition in the head and the ajna, and that goes all week. And actually we'll go into next week as well with one day where it's not uh, defined. So the head and the ajna will be defined all week. It'll make people think that they're um, that they have some great ideas, perhaps, or that they're really sure about things, and there'll be a sense of certainty in the air. So, if you hear, you know, on the news or podcasts or you know whatever you listen to, people seeming a little more confident, a little more sure of themselves, this will probably be why. Um, and uh, that forms the sixty-one twenty-four, which is a channel of awareness. And um, it's because Mars is in the gate 61 for a few days, and then and then it's in Venus. 60, gate 61 is in Venus uh, next week. Or, sorry, Venus is in gate 61 next week. That's the proper way to say it. So with the sun in gate 13, uh, that's the listener. It's also called the Fellowship of Man uh, in the original I Ching. Because it's about, um, you know, if you're a good listener, you're bringing people together, right? You're actually listening to them. You're giving them power in their words. You're, you're allowing them to be themselves, to be authentic, and to um, know that that there's somebody who's listening, right? So he's, they say uh, universal ideas and values in an ordered framework, which inspire humanistic cooperation. So it's, again, it's the coming together because you're listening. Um, in uh, the incarnation crosses this week, it's the crosses of the Sphinx, listening and masks. And in quantum human design, we call it narrative um, because it's part of the it's the other side of the 33, which we talked about um, last week. Um, that's uh, if you put them together, basically the listening and the retreat allows for storytelling and narratives and um, uh, basically uh, bringing a story back that may not have been told um it, it's actually very good for um a lot of people who are interested in their families histories and their you know the dna registries and and um ancestry.com and and uh 23andme and all that um those the type of people with either the 33 or the 13 will be the ones who will keep the family histories so they're great to have around because not all of us have that, Kate. Um, and then at Gate 7, we've got leadership. It's the army or the role of the self in interaction in the original I Ching. It's the point of convergence and by design, the need for leadership to guide and order society. So we need we need somebody in control, usually, right? Um, whether it's a group or a club or a um, committee or, you know, something at work um, and, and at work. There's always somebody in charge, right? So, um, and in the family, there's usually a matriarch or a patriarch um, who will, you know, kind of lead things and direct people and tell them what to do. And um, it doesn't necessarily mean they're authoritarian figures or, or, or authority figures, um, but they, they are just somebody who will take the lead and make sure that you get to the finish line, right? Um, in the Gene Keys, division is the shadow. Um, because leadership can be divisive as well. Um, guidance is the gift and virtue is the CD. And in quantum human design, we call it the collaborator because it is usually somebody who comes to the front or the leadership position by being invited into it. So with the Gene Key 13, the shadow is discord, the gift is discernment, and the CD is empathy. Um, and in the graphic, he says, when we listen from our heart, our soul, then we begin to see hope in everything around us. So this um, listening can lead to empathy, right? It can be something that allows us to really feel how other people are feeling, whether they're going through a hard time or a divorce or um, a death in the family or anything like that. Listening can be so important to the healing process, right? And so, you know, there are a lot of people who are still 
um, suffering because of the the grief or the sadness that was the result of COVID, right? From the pandemic. Some people had um, really tough times during the pandemic and I'm still running into those people. And, and sometimes it's, it can be really tough to get through all that. And so if you can lend an ear and listen, that's the kind of um, listening that leads to empathy. Um, I read an editorial about the, about empathy in, around the movie, The Killers of the Flower Moon, which is all about the Osage Nation in Oklahoma in the 1920s that was um, very um, a difficult time because the, the people from the, the Osage Nation had money because of the oil wells that had been discovered there. And there were white people who were basically taking it away little by little. And eventually they were left with very little, if anything, in their um, families. And so that the whole article was about the empathy that that's that this movie has engendered um, amongst people because there are still some bills that are going through um, the halls of Congress that would help children who are adopted off of um, away from their Native American families. And they actually call it the Indian Child um, Refuge Bill, I believe. Um, and and still, it doesn't have any support in Congress. It's still something that is very much um, okay to admit that there was colonization and admit that the children were taken away from their families and admit that it's okay to keep going and doing that. And if there were perhaps more mothers in Congress or more um, people in Congress who uh, realized that children should not be displaced like that, that, then it probably would be a lot different. And okay, sorry to get on my little soapbox here, but um, but empathy is important and empathy has us walk in other people's shoes in a way that we may not have walked there before. So um, he also says, we only hear discord in the world because we are unable to listen to the overall dilemma. And also that to view life at a mythic level is to see the great archetypes playing out in our lives. So if we can realize that really there are very few archetypes, there are very few different ways that people act and react and and um, and and encounter different situations, there's, you know, there's very little that's new under the sun. Um, most of these things have happened before and we can recognize them. Um, we might be surprised sometimes, but really just the listening and the empathy and the um, way that we can give our time and, you know, it's just listening. Just give give your time, give take some effort and listen to people because they have wonderful stories to tell and that will make all the difference for them. So you can imagine that listeners, uh, I mean, people who have this listening uh, in the gate 13 or the gene key 13 will be people who are trusted, people who are um, just by the way they act, the way they are. People will trust them if they have the gate 13 to be able to tell their stories, to know that it's not going to go anywhere if they don't want it to, and that they will give them the real time and, and energy that they deserve uh, for their story. So we've got a number of people who had birthdays this week. Um, Amal Clooney is among them. She has this uh, Gate 13. And so she's an amazing um, litigator and, and um, uh, negotiator for uh, all kinds of refugees um, in London and um, from Lebanon and, and, uh, and, and Africa. She's worked all over. Um, and I suspect she's a very good listener. Um, Charles Dickens, uh, Chris Rock, James Joyce, Rosa Parks. Um, Rosa Parks was listening to what was going on in the community. And she realized, um, and I just read something recently. I'm actually working on a, a story with um, some a, a group that I'm in. And the attorney for a state of Emmett Till uh, was on a call with us. And he told the story of how Rosa Parks, when she eventually met um, Emmett Till's mother, told her that it was Emmett Till's story, who who died at the hands of um, some white men in Mississippi when he was only 13 years old, that that story was what 
really um, gave her the courage and the impetus and the motivation to sit in that bus that day. Um, it didn't really have to do with her being tired. She said she was tired every day. It, that day was no different, except that day she decided that she had to make a difference and she sat on that bus and she did make a difference. Um, so people who are, who have this are uh, good listeners. They're great to talk to. And so I hope that uh, you'll have a chance to either listen, either be on the listening end this week or be on the other end where you you get to tell your story in a way that's met with empathy. So have a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon. Be well.